Hey everyone, welcome to my final reflective project. Um, today I'm pretty much going to be telling you about my life journey, my experience, if you will, uh, up to this point in my life. So, I first uh, ask you, who am I? I am Maxfield Z. Applegate. I'd like to take you to the beginning. Um, just the really real start to my life. Uh, I'll take you back. In the beginning, um, I was in fact born at home um, on a dirt road out in the backwoods. Uh, I was homeschooled in kindergarten by my mother. I was really shy. I didn't really want to be around anybody else but my mother or my family. And I was just a real antisocial kid, but um, I, with that comes the quirks. Uh, I actually did want to be a anchor or make crayons, but that really didn't go anywhere. Uh, I moved on uh, past elementary school into high school, drove around the old 80s Volvo. Um, that pretty much was my main means of transportation and my coolness. <laughs> uh, even though I was um, artistically minded, I really never took any uh, real art classes. That's something I have always regretted. Um, I did that end up taking uh, an AP class. Um, it was for English. It was the only AP class offered in my high school, but my high school was uh, not very big. I only had 88 kids with my graduating class, and uh, I wanted to go to college to be a Spanish teacher. It did not happen, though. Uh, I arrived in Pittsburgh um, at Pitt, and I really just met the love of my life. I'm still going out with her. Um, I've been uh, watching movies ever since I first took my uh, first film class in undergrad, and I actually picked up two kitties along the way, Sarah Michelle Geller and Magnolia Thunderpussy are their names. Uh, I really look to the future um, positively. I went to Chatham right after Pitt, um, really learned a lot about myself, I've never really thought about um, how I feel about the world is as detailed as I uh, learned in graduate school. Um, I really just want to be as great as I can be, and I'm proud that I'm going to be earning a master's degree. Uh, you can look ahead into the future now. Uh, I think that I'm a student who just wants a lot of things. Uh, I don't mean to sound um, like I need everything, but I just want simple things like to be happy, um, to be loved, to be successful overall. Um, I have a lot of debt, but I get to be a teacher soon. That's the beginning uh, to my future. I do want to be a lot of things, um, but I know that I have to be fearless and I have to just um, persevere. Um, I don't like being alone or uh, losing people or... The concept of failing just scares me. Uh, I think I'm going to be a lot of things, but I'll never know. I just know what I, I can be if I try hard enough. I know I'm going to remain a, a devoted companion, um, and I, <laughs> I have a soft spot in my heart for babies, and I know I want to get a puppy sometime. Uh, I just really want to live the dream that I've heard about all these years. And into 2012. Uh, I know I have a good grasp on my relationships, um, start with school. I know that uh, I love learning, I've been doing it for a while. I don't like the process of tests, but you know, they're obviously necessary. I've known myself to be uh, a successful writer. I like my own writing, but I hate being stressed out. Um, when it comes to my girlfriend, I love the companionship, I love being with her. I hate being bored. Um, I like doing routine things. Uh, I like getting through a schedule, but any dramatic changes always scare me. And coming to myself, I've always been a person to um, look to myself um, with positive feelings. I know that I like myself. I love myself. Uh, I don't like um, misunderstanding things or people misunderstanding me. I love the fact that I've come this far. Um, <laughs> one of my gripes is that I just wasn't born into the future. I was born in this past. Um, I know I'm thankful for a lot of things. Uh, here's just a few. One would be my health. 
Uh, it's just something I've always been uh, thankful for. I've never really gone to the hospital for anything major other than getting my tonsils removed in the first grade. Uh, even though I don't eat so well, um, I'm not 300 pounds, so I'm thankful for that. I just got new glasses, so it gives me a uh, sort of edge. Um, I'd like to think that I can make myself uh, uh, hold on to that for the future, and I haven't uh, gone crazy yet after all these years of schooling. I am thankful for uh, my smarts. I'm not saying that I'm the smartest, but I'm just thankful that I actually uh, have the capacity to get through this all. Um, I have failed a class. It was in my undergrad, and it was logic of all classes. I can go the rest of my life saying I'm, I'm illogical, and I failed logic. <laughs> I do think that uh, I can go on into the future forever with my brain. I'm happy that I am the person who I am. I feel like I'm a um, creative person that can pretty much think up anything that I'd like. Uh, I know my aim is true and I know where I want to be. Um, I know I've done it and I can still keep on doing it. And um, I really just look to myself to figure out uh, what I want to do and who I am. I'm thankful that I, I know who I am. Um, to translate all this, um, I would tell you the things that drive me. It's the rewarding experiences that I look for. I'm really into tech. Um, I watch a lot of media, and my friendships are some of the things that I really hold dear. Um, my will to succeed is based on the positive experiences I've had in the past, and I want to share these with my students in the future. When I'm a teacher, uh, I want to be able to laugh with them and uh, really give them questions that um, make them think. And I want to be admirable. I want, um, I want to pay close attention, um, become trusted by others, and really be there for people. It's uh, who I want to be known as. My ultimate goal, yeah, it's to live in space. <laughs> but my achievable goals are to be a great teacher. Um, I want to actually like being that great teacher. I don't want to be miserable, and I want to make the most out of my life. So we're only here for a short time, and um, I want to ask you again, who am I? Thank you. I look at our movement through this course as, as part of a journey, and I liken that journey to the Tao. The Tao being the idea of a Tao of technology, where we are learning and, and learning how to apply things. A journey which means we may be alone. A journey which might appear to be perilous, because not everyone seems to be going the same direction that we are in terms of the use of technology. But we have to keep in mind that, as the Tao tells us, a journey of a thousand leagues begins with a single step. We have to begin to work with technology. So we must never neglect any work of peace within our reach, however small, finding information and things we can apply. I can't speak for others, as they say in a Tao. I don't know. All I know is that we have our own journey to take, and each one of us appeared to take our own journey. My journey will be different than yours, and we may cross, pa cross paths in the future, and then again we may not. I'm not going to tell anyone what their journey should be. I have my own journey to take care of. As we travel down this journey, learning and applying technology, we may run, walk, or stumble. As the doll says, we may drive or fly, but never let us lose sight of the reason for the journey. For as the doll says, or we may miss a chance to see a rainbow along the way. We also have to keep in mind that we don't receive wisdom. As we've learned through this course, we must go out and discover the wisdom for ourselves. After a journey that no one can take for us or spare us from, a journey that needs to be taken. We begin with work with the wiki, the wiki being fascinating enough to see where we could store information, share information, where we can work on writing skills, research skills, hyperlink information, and do work of collaboration, a useful tool to say the least. The wiki in which we 
can get others to work with us. The important thing is, as we said before, is that we must try all things or miss the chance to see a rainbow along the way. Then we move to the podcast, the podcast where we can take our ideas, save them, and share those ideas musically and also speaking with others. And the idea of, of setting up the podcast, and not only working with the podcast, but coming up with ways for the RSS to save information, to have information, to have new ideas constantly be pouring in. And even more important with the, with the podcasting, the opportunity to work with things like NPR, where we can get ideas, save them, and share them with our students. We do have to keep in mind, as Adal says, though, that when you've completed 95% of your journey, you're only halfway there. We must learn that there's still more to learn. So we move to the pressy. And we learn that we can write and set up our frames and we can interject and, and, and try to do away with the, the restraints of the PowerPoint. And as we learn, we find out that we may not be sure that we're on the right road, but there's no need to plan our journey too far ahead. There's no need to burden ourselves, according to the Dao, with doubts and fears as to the obstacles that may bar our progress. We cannot make more than one step at a time. And we move to screencast, which I'm working on now, a screencast where we can save the information where we can upload that information. Screencasting, a true pedagogy tool. Not only can we work with it, we can also have students work with it. And it's so easy to use. What we need to keep in mind, as Adal tells us, and as we work our way through this technology, is let your mind start a journey through a strange new world. Leave all the thoughts of the world you knew before about pedagogy, about teaching, about learning, and let your soul take you where you long to be. Close your eyes and let your spirit start to soar, and you'll live as you've never lived before. For whatever reason, um, probably will become fairly obvious, I've been listening to a lot of Pink Floyd. The Particularly the wall. And I think it's because... I think it's because teachers feature very prominently in the story of the main character of the wall, particularly in um, one or two of the songs, and it seems pretty remarkable to me what a powerful impact, in a negative way, the character of the teacher in the wall had. And hearing the wall makes me think that the biggest goal that I have personally is to never inspire a rock band to write a whole album that includes such an incredible bunch of damaging behavior by the teachers in their lives. I hope that I'm never so horrible a teacher that I will inspire a rock band. <laughs> to be extremely vulnerable to what a 
the teacher may you know do for good or for ill. is incredibly important too. This is another song. Uh, I mean, I think this whole album, uh, I mean, it's about childhood and I think that's such a huge part of, you know, what a teacher does. And, you know, a parent that is helping build the wall is, I, I think, a potential obstacle that, that every teacher is going to have to deal with for every child. to see them without that defensive structure around them and then be respectful enough to leave it as it is but give them the tools and the opportunities to come out from behind it and learn that particular skill because everybody needs to know how to do that I'm recording this message at 10 after 2, Sunday morning. I'm very tired. It's been a long semester, I ain't gonna lie. But 
I've had a really good time with this, this class. It's been a real bright spot this semester, and I've learned a ton. So thanks very much. Hi, everyone. Um, as we are in the last week of the semester, is kind of scary. Um, can't believe that it's already over. But for the final project, I really just wanted to focus on pretty much how everything throughout my college experience has kind of been coming to an end this semester and been making complete sense. Um, so I kind of created my Prezi presentation. Um, with one of my own paintings because I feel that, especially in art education, your own work is very important to the work that you do with kids in the classroom. So I really focused this semester on kind of the path that I'm taking in life and if it's the right path. Um, so deciding if you're on the right path. I decided that I am and <laughs> what is this presentation is kind of going to explain is why I've decided that, uh, what things have happened this semester that have kind of just reassured me that I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Um, so what if your paths interact? I've had a lot of that throughout this semester, just thought I wanted to go one way with teaching, I thought I wanted to go one way with art, and they've kind of just combined together in a nice flow, so to speak. Um, I've been learning a lot this semester about my teaching philosophy and I really was inspired during my field placements at Manchester um, for helping those who have nothing. And some of these kids in Pittsburgh Public really don't have the, I would say, necessities that I grew up with. Um, and I just really have been wanting to help those kids. Um, how do you know if your philosophy is right? You really don't know, uh, but I have kind of learned this semester that using your heart and your mind really helps you to learn what you should be teaching and how it affects kids. Um, I've learned a lot about how creating can clear your mind for comprehension. So not only can art help further your art, um, but it also can help clear your mind for subjects such as math and English and science. Um, and yes, your own work does completely affect your philosophy. I know that a lot of my work has, this semester, has really affected how I feel about my teaching philosophy. Creativity and individualism, I feel, are the two main aspects of my teaching philosophy that I will incorporate into my uh, students' lives. Does the field of education need to change? Yes, I completely think that it does. Um, I think that we should still teach the basics, but we should look at the great resources available online that we've learned this semester throughout this class. All of the internet resources and all of the things that we have learned that have inspired us. Um, and I think it should be an, a combination of both the basics and the new, not an elimination of one or the other. But this semester I've just kind of been putting everything together in my mind. Um, you know, it's one of my last semesters here at Chatham. and. I've really just been able to take everything that I've learned and put it all together in a nice, neat path in my mind. Um, and I know that my personal life affects my teaching in many different ways, and I've learned that throughout the semester. And the one other thing that I've really learned is that time management does not go away. So, inspiration from other teachers. Like I said, I've been really inspired this semester throughout my time at Manchester, and I think that a lot of throughout the along the way a lot of other teachers have inspired me so my question to end the semester is why teach that's kind of what i've been dealing with throughout this semester and throughout college and i think this semester and this class has really pushed me to figure out my reason for teaching and why i want to so i hope you guys enjoyed um so i want to leave you guys with which which path is yours and hopefully everybody can figure that out for themselves Hi, this is Rachel, and this is my final thoughts presentation for the class. When I started grad school, one of my main areas of interest was the inequity in education, particularly um, along racial and economic divides, 
and that has continued to be a strong area of interest to me. And this semester, I have gotten to think about it a lot. And so that's what I wanted to make my final presentation on. It's a big subject to take on in a short amount of time. So I will try and be brief, but um, I wanted to start with this picture. If you look at this picture, every single kid in this class seems to be eager to learn. Every single one of them has their hand raised. Yet, based on statistics and general knowledge, it's pretty well known that some of the kids in that class will do poorly for no other reason than the color of their skin or their economic background, and that is completely unacceptable. There's no reason that in such an advanced society that we shouldn't be able to accommodate curriculum to ensure that everyone has the same opportunities and advantages, especially when we have classrooms full of kids that are eager to learn but are having doors slammed in their face. So the big question here is why? Why are our students not being given the opportunity to learn? Um, my big answer here is brought down to three points, which are essentially, number one, because we fund schools unfairly. This is a big argument, one that I don't have time to cover fully, but I really believe that the first step in ensuring that education is equal for everyone is starting by taking all of the education money and dividing it evenly per student, regardless of whether that kid lives in the poorest neighborhood in the state or the richest neighborhood in the state. If we have $5,000 per kid, there's no reason that some children should be getting $7,000 while other children are getting two. Um, obviously, I just made those numbers up. But when we fund schools unfairly, we can't have expectations of equal learning opportunities. The next thing that I thought is that we have low expectations. Simply put, people don't expect poor and minority students to excel in school. And there is no reason that they shouldn't expect those kids to excel in school. They can. Just because you're poor or you're born a different race doesn't mean that you don't have the same capacity, if not more capacity, than wealthier children or white children. Um, the third thing is that, simply put, we refuse to change. The education system is very slow in changing, and when it does change, there's a lot of input from people who are not knowledgeable about the subject. Politicians, we have, at this point, huge economic leaders who are dipping their hands into education reform who are, I'm certain, have good intentions, but they just don't have the experience or knowledge to back up those if, um, their ideas. And thus, they spend a lot of money on changes that are not good for our students. So. Those are the three things that I think are, not the only three things, but three of the things that I think are really at play here. So what can we do? I put this picture of these kids with these tablets in the picture because I thought that having technology in the classroom is one of the first ways we can begin to equalize education, especially in low-income schools where kids don't have access to the technology outside the classroom, or if they do, it's very limited. When kids leave the work or leave for the workforce, whether they go to college or not, they're going to be at a significant disadvantage if they don't have access to technology. Even jobs that we think of as fallbacks for the uneducated, such as waiters and cashiers, all need to have significant technology, te technological abilities in order to be successful. People use iPads in restaurants now. So if we can offer students the ability to learn about that technology in the classroom, even if they don't have that ability at home, then we have given them the first steps towards equalizing the playing field, towards making their lives 
a little bit better and towards making that American dream possible. So I know I went a couple seconds over and I apologize, but that is a very brief overview of my thoughts on this semester. Thanks, and I really love the class and wish you all well. So I put together for EDU 618 on Prezi. It's about, kind of about. And we learned about screencast o -matics, which I'm using right now. Yes. Google Reader that I use to read all the websites and blogs that I read every day. We learned about podcasting. We put together podcasts using the aviary feature. We learned how to upload things into our YouTube station, which I had no idea how to do before. We learned things from the author of the book we read, Alan November. We almost had him account out. That's all right. The stuff that he wrote about and talked about in his lectures was pretty excellent. And we also utilized the website TED and learned about TED Talks. And those are really fun to watch and listen to, and even though they were kind of long, they really weren't all that boring. So after all that, here's me, enlightened, full of knowledge about the internet and how to internet. And here is the light bulb above my head going off. I think that this class is really valuable in a number of ways. I mean, the current way that kids are learning isn't exactly technologically savvy, and they're probably better at technology than their current teachers are now anyway. So we need to get a jump on that now in order to better serve them in the future and in the present. A lot of these things that we learned about, I know for that. And... I think that a lot of these things, if not all of them, have a use in the classroom and can be used to add depth to a curriculum. It can make a curriculum more interesting and they can help uh, add student comprehension and application as well because these are kind of the kind of things that kids are interested in. They're not into textbooks and you know they're into uh, iPads and laptops and Twitter and wikis and everything. So I think that this class is relevant. I think all of the activities we did were relevant and I think that it is necessary especially moving forward as a teacher um, to not only have a good grasp of this stuff but to continue learning about this stuff in order to best suit the needs of students now and in the future so I thank you for your class and I thank you for the time hello everyone this is Kristen Koberger and this is my final Prezi reflection for our EDU 618 class. So I guess I wanted to start with what I knew when I started here at Chatham. Um, because my mom's a teacher and I've been somewhat familiar, I guess, with the teacher side of the education world through her, I knew that teaching is not a 95 job before I came here. So I, I had no delusions of free time or <laughs> an easy profession. Something else um, I think I realized um, through my own work with kids, whether it be babysitting or teaching horseback riding lessons or working at the daycare, um, students do not learn the same way. And that's okay. Um, that's what the teachers are there for. If everyone learned the same way, then you wouldn't need teachers. You'd only need computers and recordings. And third, summers off is not a reason to become a teacher. Um, I've had some great teachers, I've had some awful teachers, and I think the awful teachers got this into teaching because they wanted vacation time, which is the sin. I think they should be fired. <laughs> but So what I knew I wanted, what I have learned, I mean, um, after my three semesters here at Chatham, um, Differentiation is easier than you think. I have just recently become more comfortable with differentiating assignments and tasks I have for students. I used to think it was this big scary monster and that I wouldn't be able to do it, but it's not as bad as I thought, um, so I'm not as scared anymore. Um, another thing, scripted curriculum does not have to be the end of the world. Um, all you hear about is the evils of scripted curriculum, and I'm certainly not a proponent of it, but if 
you take the time as a teacher to make the lessons more interesting, to differentiate them, to meet the needs of your students, you can still get things done with that curriculum. And finally, um, technology is easier to use than you think, and I've learned that through this class because I always thought, well, how in the heck am I going to incorporate technology into my classroom without it being a big production, without spending too much money, all of these things. Um, I mean, the simple tools like the Elmo or the Smart Board, obviously ideal, but simple things like having students make their own blogs or wiki pages or Digo, I, I'm not as afraid anymore to try and use it, so I'm excited for that. Um, three tech tools I learned in this class, which I had never heard of before. First one, Prezi. Prezi is amazing. It's like so much cooler than PowerPoint. It's so much more fun. You can do even more things with it. I had no idea it existed and I can't wait to use it some more. Um, Screencast-O-Matic. Um, did not know that existed. <laughs> did not know how people were able to upload videos like I'm about to, where you go through a presentation like the Prezi and um, can speak and go through it. So uh, that's amazing. That would be really cool to use in the class for like online lectures. And finally, Digo. Did not know about that either. Apparently, I didn't know about much. So <laughs> Digo is really cool because um, I had no idea you could save things that easily, that you could comment, that you could highlight, that you could make groups. Like it makes it so much more efficient, so much better um, than trying to remember all the websites you visited. So I'm very excited to use those. Um, so how do I feel now that I've gone through three semesters, now that I'm student teaching next semester, and that I guess eventually I will be in the classroom as a teacher, how do I feel about it? I feel excited a lot more so than when I first started um, because I realize how much I really do like being a teacher, how much I do like the kids, and how much I think I can contribute. Um, unfortunately, I'm a little worried. Um, the education system is not amazing in America, so I do worry about scripted curriculums and standardized tests and fighting through the red tape. But I am still hopeful that teachers like us Chatham students will be able to change things at least maybe one classroom at a time. That would be amazing. So finally, I have this little quote from John Lennon. It's one of my favorite things. Life is what happens to you while you are busy making other plans. Um, I mean, not only can you apply that to anything you do, but especially in the classroom, as teachers, we want to make plans, we want to be organized, we want to stay on track, but the students are not always going to let us do that. So I will try to remember this when I'm going nuts, when the students won't sit down or they won't listen or whatever thing is happening in the classroom that makes me nuts. So thanks for listening. Thanks for the great class. I learned so much about the amazing ways you can use technology, and I'm super excited with all the tools I have now. Thanks guys, bye. This is a story about Pittsburgh, or rather, me finding my purpose in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has always been a beautiful place, a place I wanted to make my own. But it's been a long journey there. I begin rebelliously in May, not in September, when I went to a beautiful university that was prettier than Chatham, let me tell you. But I flew away from there, excitedly, not to the south side exactly, but to Pittsburgh, traveling like balloons, blown by the wind, entering a place that was culturally a little more diverse, since I live with the Japanese and Chinese and Singaporeans, if that's a word, immigrants in my apartment complex. I made a home in Point Breeze and I found a job in East Liberty working at a nonprofit that does after school programming. I liked it. But this perhaps should be a bit more about Chatham than other things. 
I didn't really like Chatham. I still don't really like Chatham. I came here for Pittsburgh. The gym's not bad. But I came here for Pittsburgh, not for Chatham. The online courses aren't bad either. I actually like using Digo and interacting on wikis. And I've forced people to use Prezi in their presentations. I've had a lot of fun, too, investigating creativity and 21st le century learning skills. But I'm not really sure how much I'll actually apply it in the classroom. Hmm. The classroom. I learned a lot more in the classroom. Not necessarily my Chatham classrooms where differentiated reading, writing, and technology taught me how to do other homework in the back of the class, but perhaps a little bit more in the classrooms of schools where I did my field placement and did my after school programming and where most importantly I focused in on the kids. They're the reason I came here. They're the reason I took a long way home. My undergraduate was a lot more intellectually stimulating, but it kept me away from the city that I love and the kids that I love. Here, even though I'm getting a relatively dull MAT, I can center my life around upbuilding children from different cultures and with different needs. I can build bridges across diversity and across rivers of weariness. And I can laugh again with my kids. That's my story. That's the story of Pittsburgh and how I took the long way home. Hi, everyone. And welcome to my final reflections for EDU 618. This is Lauren Karpieski. As Abraham Lincoln said, towering genius disdains a beaten path. It seeks regions hitherto unexplored. I think that's what we need to do as teachers. There is no path ahead of us as far as technology goes. It moves too fast. We need to be able to be creative in the classroom, to come up with ways to use this new technology to benefit our students and the classroom in general. It's not just about what you know, it's about how you present your knowledge. The more interaction the students have with the medium, the more engaged they will become. And using technology not only increases the amount of information available, it creates a connection between the students, or excuse me, between the subject being taught and the students' own interests. We're all on this path together. And as Alan November says, we have some very important decisions to make if we want to truly prepare our children for a world in which the internet is the dominant media. Continuing our current strategy of filtering the internet is no longer sufficient. Children need us to be exemplary role models. One of the things that really struck me during this class was uh, finding out about Google Lit Trips uh, with Google Earth. Um, and in one of my previous prezies, I had gone and um, and taken a look at uh, the lit trip for the Grapes of Wrath, how they had to travel through the desert and travel through the salt flats and all of these desolate areas uh, in order to, in mountainous regions, in order to get to California to find, you know, jobs and a home. I think that would be a really interesting thing to share with my class. Um, you know, this is one of the areas that they would have had to travel through, these desolate areas where it just seems like there's no hope. But even in these kinds of areas, there's st hope still exists. Life still goes on. Flowers still bloom, bloom in the spring. And I think that that is something we have to remember um, in this day and age whenever all of these cuts are being made to education and everything seems like it's going downhill. We have the power to move 
the education system forward and and just use our creativity and our our strength um, in order to to really get things done um, and I really hope we can do that once we become teachers um, and enter the education field. And here are some Digo links that I had come up with. I'm excited to add more to them, and I'm even more excited to share these with my future students. Um, one of the many texts that I will be integrating into the classroom, uh, thanks to this, thanks to this class. Thank you for listening.